Welcome back to Level Up Design. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a relationship slash child system like they have in Fire Emblem. This is probably going to be a long one. I'll make it as concise as I can, but there's a lot to go through. And if you love RPG Maker tips, tricks, tutorials, and just general discussion about RPG Maker, then scroll down and hit subscribe and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. So to get started, what I'm going to do is open up a Photoshop file. And to do this, we're just going to be using Gail, Michelle, Albert, and Casey. So I'm going to copy all these guys over into a plain Photoshop file. Alright, so we've copied these over into a plain Photoshop file. The reason we're doing that is because we need to figure out the combinations and the kids. There's like this sort of little family timeline tree we have to make. So these are the different combinations of couples we can have and we need to design a child for each of them. So I'm going to jump back over into the engine and open up the character generator. And I'm going to create a child and an adult version of the characters for each of these couples. So let's get started on that. Okay, now that we've got the characters created, I'm just going to load that up in a Photoshop file as well. And I'm just going to copy them over. And there we have it. These are the four different combinations of characters you'll be able to have after you have the romance section part of your game. So you'll only ever be able to have these two kids at the same time, or these two kids at the same time. You could have multiples at the same time, but that would just make family reunions really awkward. So now that we understand the basic premise, I'm going to jump back over into the RPG Maker engine and I'm just going to add these characters down onto the field. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a controlling event, which will be this little piggy. And this little piggy is going to control the entire relationship slash having kids event process. Having this all happen in a pocket realm just makes it really easy to do all the variables and whatnot and keep everything centralized on the one map. Now first thing we want to do is we just want to define a few variables. So I'm just going to change the maximum to 40 just so I can do this on a new page. And first we want to define relationship levels. So Gail and Michelle, Gail and Casey, Michelle and Albert, and Casey and Albert. So these variables are just going to be controlling the relationship levels between the characters. And if you ever wanted to change one of the values, all you do is load up one of those variables and add a score of 1 to it. And it's that easy. So I'm going to get out of that now. And Piggy is going to say, <coughs> Who should speak to each other? <coughs> and then we're going to give the player options of which characters they want to interact with each other. So we'll just go show choices and we'll make sure the default choice is choice 1 and you can cancel disallow. So what we'll do is we'll have choice one, Gail and Michelle. Choice two, Casey and Gail. Choice three, Michelle and Albert. Choice four, Albert and Casey. Choice five, none of the above. And just under the none of the above we're just going to put the piggy voice again. Don't waste my time! I just set off the neighborhood's dogs. Now before we go through the painfully tedious process of making multiple different cutscenes, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a controller. Blah, 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 blah. What we're going to do is set up a controller for the scene. So right in the top left hand corner we're just going to have a parallel process and this is only going to activate if variable Gail and Michelle are equal to two. They have to be equal to two. What we're going to do is grab that, copy it four times. The second one, instead of Gail and Michelle, it's going to be Gail and Casey. This one over here, it's going to be Michelle and Albert. This one over here, it's going to be Albert and Casey. Now, what we want to do is when these variables happen, we want them to have a child. So, when this happens, it's going to initiate a self-switch. So, self-switch A, new event page, self-switch A. So that self switch is going to be an auto run. And what's going to happen is a bit of text. Dim the screen, appear in the middle, and Gail and Michelle became close. Very close. So close it resulted in a child. And we're just going to add some switches. First switch will be Calum. 
which is the name of the child that Gail and Michelle have. That will be turned on. Self switch B will be turned on. And in control self switch B, nothing will happen. But what we'll do over here is we're just going to add the little kid version of Calum, and he'll just be running around doing pretty much nothing. He's only going to appear if the switch Calum is on. And if you talk to him, he's just going to say, my mummy and daddy are the strongest. And then what we're going to do is we'll just add a few more variables. So we'll add Calum age, Ash age, Kaylee age, and Elise age. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit Calum age and we're just going to add that by one. So every time we talk to Calum, his age is going to go up by one. We're going to hit a new event page. And if the variable Calum age is equal to, say, three, then he's going to be the grown up Calum. Now, just before we jump into game and test that out, we're going to load up this little piggy. And under Gail and Michelle, we're just going to add a small cutscene. Now, we don't want the cutscenes to be the same every single time. So what we're going to do is make a conditional branch. And we're going to say if variable Gail and Michelle is equal to zero, we're going to add another one where it'll be if Gail and Michelle are equal to one. Last one, which will be if Gail and Michelle are equal to two. And what this means is depending on which variable it is, it's going to play a different scene. And for the sake of brevity, if Gail and Michelle are equal to two, we're just going to have the piggy say, they're already close enough. <laughs> and that'll just end that right there. Now, if Gail and Michelle are zero, we'll add a small little cutscene. Hey, Michelle, I just wanted to see that you are looking fine. Wow, thanks, Gail. And at the end of that, we're just going to go control variables, add Gail and Michelle plus one. Then under this one here, Hey, Michelle, how are you? Oh, hi, Gail. You are looking fine. And then again, we're just going to add another variable to number two. So now the variable of Gail and Michelle should equal two. And when that happens, this parallel event should trigger, which will make this self switch turn on, and then this will come over here, and then they're going to have a kid, which will turn uh, the Calum on, and then I'll word that differently. And then Calum is going to appear over here, and you're going to talk to him, and he's going to age up, and then bam. And he's just going to be like, I am the strongest. And if you wanted to add him to the party, you just need to make a character for him, and then just go, you know, uh, blah, 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 change party member, add Calum. And you just do that on a variable that Calum's age is three. But for the sake of not embarrassing myself, I'm just going to check the process. So, you talk to Piggy. Piggy says, oink, 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 blah -de blah -de blah and you get these two talking. They're going to talk two times, and after two times they talk, this variable should equal two. Coming over here, switches that on. It says they've had a baby, turns over to self-switch B, self-switch B is nothing. Calum's on. Yeah, alright. I think we're safe to proceed. Let's test it out. Alright, so here we are in the little pocket dimension. These guys aren't saying much at the moment. And as you can see, Calum's not appearing yet. So, let's talk to Piggy. Well, who should speak to each other? Now, if we say none of the above, none of them are going to talk. Don't waste my time! Alright, so let's get this ball rolling. Gail and Michelle. Hey, Michelle, I just wanted to say that you were looking fine. Oh, wow. Thanks, Gail. Oh, no. I've got an endless loop. Oh, no. <laughs> Alright, that's an easy fix. What we're going to do, instead of turning this into an if statement, we're going to create an if else. So, if there's zero, do this. If else, we're going to do this. So, copy that in the else section. We're going to create this as an if else as well. So if they are one, do this. Else, going to copy that into the else section as well. And now it's going to be if the variable equals zero, they'll say this. Or if it doesn't equal zero, check to see if it equals one, and then they'll do this. Or if it doesn't equal one, check to see if it equals two. And then this will happen. So that should hopefully end that stupid endless loop we just had. Alright, so let's go talk to Piggy. I'm not doing the voice again. Who do you want to speak? Gail and Michelle. Hey Michelle, I just wanted to see that you are looking fine. Wow, thanks Gail. 
And there we have it, we've ended that loop. Now if we talk to him again, it should be the second cutscene. Who should speak to each other? Hey Michelle, how are you? Oh hi Gail, you are looking fine. Yeah, and then the parallel process happens. Gail and Michelle became close, very close. So close that it resulted in a child. And there we go, Caleb's appeared down the bottom. He's roaming around aimlessly like he's got nothing to do on this planet. My mommy and daddy are the strongest. Now if we talk to him three times, he should grow up. My mommy and daddy are the strongest. If only you could talk to children three times in real life and they'd grow up. My mommy and daddy are the strongest. Bam, Caleb just evolved. I am the strongest. Now I'm just going to speed develop through the rest of it so all of these relationships can happen and they can all have kids and soon enough this map will be filled with the pitter patter of little parasites running around. Also if you guys are enjoying this content then I would really appreciate it if you scroll down and hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Now obviously this is a very basic version of what the child system was in Fire Emblem. In the Fire Emblem system, the mother had specific children she could have, and she could have those children with any of her romantic partners. So you could have one child named Kana with three different males, and it'd be the same kid. And throughout the whole process of your child growing up, you could go to their pocket dimension and complete quests. And then after you did all that, they join the party. So there's loads of things you can do with this uh, if you just take the time to perfect it. Okay, so I've sped through all of that. Let's just do a quick run through and see if this all works. By the way, the sponsor of today's video is myself. I have an itch.io page where I craft and release assets. So as you can see, I've got some free assets here as well as some paid assets like these sci-fi doors that I've just created for $1.49. In this pack, you've got six different animated assets that you can use for doors, sci-fi and modern doors. So if you're interested in downloading and purchasing some RPG Maker assets, you can get them at level up designitchio It means so much to me when you guys support me through itch downloads. Link is in the description. Get yourself some sci-fi doors and thank you very much. All right, so everything's looking fine at the moment. Let's uh, let's have some different people have children now. So we'll have uh, Michelle and Albert and Casey and Gail. Hey Casey, I just wanted to see that you are looking fine. Oh wow, thanks Gail. Do that again. Hey Casey, how are you? Oh hi Gail, you are looking fine. Gail and Casey became close, very close. So close that it resulted in a child. Oh, and there she is over here. I love you dad. Oh, that's the wrong text box. <laughs> but you get the drift after talking to her three times. Let's find something to burn. She's all grown up and she's an adult now and she's roaming around. So let's have another child. Who should speak to each other? This time we'll make it Albert and... Uh, Albert and Michelle. Fine morning to you, Michelle. And you too, Albert. Hee <laughs> hee. I'll do it again. How do you fare, Michelle? Oh, Albert, I think I'm in love. Albert and Michelle Bay came close, so close that it resulted in a child. There we go. So now we've got two children running around. Well, that's a grown-up one over there. This is a young child. I love you, Dad. That's the correct text box. So I'll do this three times, and bam. Hey, Dad, what can I do for you? Now, let's complicate the family reunion by bringing some more children into this world. Gail and Michelle became close. Very close. So close that it resulted in a child. And there's Caleb running around. Let's talk to him a few times. Now he's an adult. Let's get back over here. Get our final child, which is between Albert and Casey. And there we go. Yo, Papa, how's it hanging? And now he's an adult. What's up, Daddy-o? So as you can see, we went through a big, long, complicated process, but now we have an entire map full of children 
from a love party? I think this is how this happened. This was a love party? A few too many glasses of red wine and <laughs> this happened? And if you guys are interested in doing more things with RPG Maker, like making better maps, you can click on this video on the left, which will show you how to make better world maps. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.